Hey guys, today we'll be covering a 2005 romance film called Memoirs of a Geisha. The movie is set in the year 1929. A fisherman is a father of two young sisters, namely Satsu and Chio. Since the family lives in poverty, the fisherman is planning to sell off his daughters out of desperation for money. When all the arrangements are done, he drags them out of bed and hands them to a businessman named Tanaka. Tanaka further sells the crying girls to another man, who then takes them to Gion, Kyoto. He makes a stop at an entertainment house, traditionally called the Okia. A worker of the establishment named Auntie looks at the girls, analyzing what might be the best job for the two of them. Since the elder sister Satsu is not as pretty, she is sent to a brothel. Meanwhile, the younger Chio is kept at the establishment to be trained as a geisha, a Japanese woman appointed to dance, sing, and entertain guests in an entertainment house. On being separated from her sister, poor Chio is devastated. She is taken to meet the owner of the Okia, known as the mother. She is even pickier than Auntie and doesn't want to keep Chio in the house because of her deep blue eyes that are considered unnatural. But Auntie manages to convince her that the little girl would be an asset to their establishment. After being approved, she is locked into her new room. Chio retaliates by screaming and crying, but is left unattended. That is until a girl her age named Pumpkin consoles her. She was also sold to the Okia and knows that things will get easier with time. If they obey their mother and become geishas in the future, they will live a happy life. When Chio calms down, she is bathed and made to wear new clothes. As Pumpkin and Chio work around the house, Chio expresses her desire to find her sister and run away from the place. But since the city consists of hundreds of houses, she will probably never find her without outside help. Then we are introduced to the senior geisha of the Okia named Hatsumomo. She is considered the most beautiful woman in the town and is respected as such. But she is also very cruel and rude to people who she thinks are inferior to her. When she first meets little Chio, she starts seeing her as a threat and belittles her for smelling like fish. It turns out that Hatsumomo brings in the most money, which is why her diva-like behavior is tolerated in the Okia. Since Chio is joining the geisha school soon, she also has a chance to be as successful as Hatsumomo. On their first day of school, Pumpkin and Chio are late for their class, but manage to mingle with the others in no time. A few days later, Mother asks Chio to clean Hatsumomo's room. Chio is reluctant since she was told to keep away, but she is not brave enough to defy the mother's order. When Hatsumomo finds her in her room, she is filled with rage. She calls her disgusting for how she smells and also mentions that her sister had visited that day. Chio begs Hatsumomo to tell her where her sister is and in turn agrees to do anything. Hatsumomo is envious of a competitor named Mamea and is planning to ruin her expensive kimono. But to make sure she is not caught, she makes Chio ruin it by painting all over it. Then they go to the rival Okia, and Chio is forced to put back the stolen kimono. But to her misfortune, she is caught. When the mother is informed, she punishes Chio by beating her in the pouring rain. She only stops when Auntie interrupts and saves the little girl. Even after being betrayed by Hatsumomo, Chio is desperate to find her sister. So, she begs her to reveal where Satsu is. Hatsumomo discloses that Satsu is now a prostitute, working in the red light district. One night, Chio is tasked to escort Hatsumomo to her workstation. This gives her an opportunity to escape to the Pleasure District. She manages to keep out of sight and is soon reunited with her sister. The girls plan to meet again at the Sasami Bridge the next night to escape. When Chio returns to the Okia later, she discovers Hatsumomo and her lover, Koichi, making love. The couple notice her in the doorway and jolt up. The mother hears all the noise and is about to catch them in the act. In a moment of panic, Koichi runs away and Hatsumomo stuffs money into Chio's dress, accusing her of trying to run away. But this time, Chio doesn't stay quiet. She tells the mother about Koichi, which results in Hatsumomo being punished. She is banned from ever seeing her lover again. The next day when it gets dark, Chio climbs up to the roof to escape, but as she reaches her final hurdle, she slips and falls to the ground. In the following scene, an injured Chio is being scolded by the mother for her foolishness. She also reveals that both of Chio's parents are dead, as her father died not long after she and her sister were sold. Moreover, her sister ran away without her last night, which means she has no family left. The only way she can survive now is by making the Okia her home, and the geishas her family. However, now that she has made many mistakes, the mother doesn't allow her to attend geisha school. Instead, she is forced to labor around the house. One day when she is at her lowest, something happens that changes Chio's life entirely. She bumps into Chairman Iwamura, a kind and generous man who notices she is sad and helps her even though she is a stranger to him. He gives her some money and shows her a kindness that not even her parents had shown her. The gesture leaves an everlasting impression on the girl. Chio donates the money to the temple, but keeps the chairman's handkerchief with her. She had seen him with a geisha, which makes her believe that if she becomes one, she could be closer to him someday. 
Years pass, but Chio continues to live as a slave, while Pumpkin is promoted to a geisha. One night, the rival geisha, Mamea, comes to the mother with a strange offer. She wants Chio to be handed to her, so she can teach the girl how to become a geisha. Although skeptical, mother agrees to Mamea's proposal. Starting that day, Mamea teaches Chio how to act like a proper geisha. Most girls take years to learn proper etiquette, but Chio is a fast learner. Every geisha is supposed to get a dan, a man who will pay for her expenses, get to know her on a more personal level, and is allowed to have sexual relations with her. Chio hopes that she will soon get herself a wealthy dana who could sponsor her. During training, Mamea reveals why she wants Chio to be a geisha so desperately. Since Hatsumomo is too harsh and Pumpkin is too easily manipulated, Chio is the perfect candidate to be the next heir of the Okia. If either of the other two gets the job, several disputes may arise in the future among the rival Okias. When Chio is finally done with the training, she is named Sayuri and is promoted to Maiko, or Apprentice Geisha. On the day of her debut, she performs elegantly in front of the audience. Hatsumomo tries to wittingly compliment her to make fun of her in front of the audience, but Sayuri, with her smartness, turns Hatsumomo into a laughing stock. To introduce Sayuri to more potential danas, Mamea takes her to a sumo match. The other attendees of the match are the chairman and his friend and business person, President Nobu. Sayori is overjoyed to see the chairman in front of her after so many years. She has had him on her mind every single day for years, but she is asked to socialize with President Nobu instead. The president is not an easy man to please. He despises the concept of geisha altogether and is a man of principles. Still, with her interesting comments about the match, Sayuri manages to impress him. A few days later, Mamea asks Sayuri to cut herself on her thighs. Sayuri, not knowing what else she could do, obeys her without question. Then, she is taken to Dr. Crab, who is stunned by her beauty. It turns out that a girl becomes a true geisha only when she loses her virginity to her dana. If Sayori manages to impress both President Nobu and Dr. Crab, they will compete to become the winning bid for the highest price for her virginity. For the next few days, they go to several parties to socialize and impress the men. But one day, out of the blue, Dr. Crab refuses to see them. Later, Pumpkin tells Sayuri that Hatsumomo told Dr. Crab that Sayuri isn't actually a virgin. She did so in an attempt to remove one of the highest bidders, which would make Sayuri less desirable. Mamea then pulls some strings to make Sayuri the star at the next lavish party. On the night of the party, Sayuri is nervous, but her performance is exceptional. In a single night, she becomes the talk of the town and the most desirable geisha. This further ensures that men will compete to become her dana. But something strange happens when Mamea's dana, the Baron, also takes interest in Sayuri. Mamea is very close to her dana and is not fond of sharing him. Still, she allows Sayuri to go to his party the next week. On the day of the party, the Baron takes her away to show off his kimono collection. However, he lets his desire get the best of him and undresses her against her will. Mamea finds out about this and berates Sayuri for sleeping with her dana. Even when Sayori swears that she did not initiate the interaction and they did not get intimate, Mamea doesn't believe her. Then, as the bids for her virginity begin, she receives the largest bid any geisha has ever had. Before this, Pumpkin was said to be the next hire of the Okia, but after seeing the profit, the mother hands the responsibility to Sayori. Pumpkin is heartbroken because being hired at Okia was the only thing she ever wanted. The incident causes her to envy her own friend. When outside, Mamea reveals that the highest bidder in Sayori's now Dana is Dr. Crap. President Nobu didn't even bid, staying true to his principles. As per tradition, Sayori gives herself up to Dr. Crab that night and finally becomes a true geisha. She returns home to find Hatsumomo in her room, burning in jealousy and hatred. She has found the handkerchief given by the chairman and tries to burn it. They struggle to get a hold of it, which causes a lamp to fall and set the room on fire. In the morning, Hatsumomo is thrown out of the Okio with no way of returning to her former life. The very next day comes the news of the World War. The environment grows hostile and unsafe for people in the city. The chairman runs to the Okia and escorts Sayuri to a safer place at Nobu's request. Sayuri is taken away, hoping the chairman will come with her. For the next few years, she works as a kimono maker in a small village with very minimal contact with the love of her life. Then one fine day, President Nobu comes to see her and reveals how badly the war has harmed his business. The Baron has died and most of the wealthy ones have gone penniless. But Nobu still thinks he can flourish his business if he receives American help. So, he wants Sayuri to seduce a man named Colonel Derricks, who can grant them the required funds. Sayuri returns to the city to meet Mamea, who is now a mere shadow of her past. 
she offers Sayori a kimono, allowing her to become a geisha one more time for President Nobu. Sayori dresses up for the first time in years, and finally, the day comes when she meets the chairman again. She also meets Pumpkin, who is now a full-blown prostitute. In the evening, Derek's, Nobu, the chairman, and the girls are in a hot spring. Derex tries getting too close to Sayori, but she blocks his advances. Nobu is still attracted to Sayori and dispossessive of her. He saw her with Derex earlier and is mad about the incident. Sayori knows that if Nobu sees her sleeping with Derex, he will surely stop liking her and she will be free to pursue the chairman. So she devises a plan to do so. The next evening, she goes to her room with Derex and seduces him. She hopes that Pumpkin will bring Nobu to the door so he sees she belongs to another man. However, Pumpkin betrays Sayori and brings the chairman instead. The chairman sees Sayori with Derex before walking away in disgust. Pumpkin does this to take revenge on Sayori for taking her position as the heir of Okia long ago. Sayori has no time to mourn their friendship because she just lost the love of her life. She completely gives up on love for the first time in her life and throws the chairman's handkerchief away. On returning to her house, she is told that someone has come to meet her. She assumes it is Nobu and goes to meet him. But to her surprise, it turns out to be the chairman. He knew about Sayori's feelings a long time ago and has always rooted for her success. But he couldn't approach her all these years because he owed his life to Nobu, and she made Nobu happy. However, having had enough of denying his feelings, he finally expresses his love for her. In the end, the couple kiss. Starting that day, he becomes her Dana, and the two share a happy life together.